Hi, I'm Mark Reagan from Christ Church. In this video, I'm going to explore the question of where our heart should be when we come together and worship. When I was in college, I sang in a college choir. I went to a Christian college. And so every spring, our college choir would embark on a tour of some place in the United States, and we'd present these concerts and churches various evenings. And I remember at the time being encouraged to sing our praises, even in a very formal setting in a college choir, sing your praises unto, unto the Lord, that we should glorify His, His name with the songs that we're, we're singing, even for an audience. But I found after the concert was over, I was often kicking myself because my focus was always on the details and making sure that I'm singing the things correctly and beautifully and making an excellent sound and not so much on the actual words and content of the song. And so many of us maybe have these sorts of questions when we are going to worship. Did we actually worship the Lord well? Was our attention divided? And what does God actually think of this sort of thing? Are these actually valid concerns? In going through the motions of singing sacred songs, is God only glorified if our hearts are 100% intent on offering adoration to Him? Or is there more to this than merely the affections and feelings of the heart when we're singing our praises to the Lord? As we're trying to answer these questions, we must try to figure out what does God actually require of us when we come to worship. So here's a few things from the Bible. One principle is that sacrifice is to be excellent and entire. The Old Testament gives us instruction about how animals are to be brought forth to sacrifice to God. Those animals were to be in excellent condition without blemish. You can confirm this in Leviticus 22, verse 22. The New Testament tells us that praise is to be in the heart of man. Paul exhorts the Colossians to sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, Colossians 3.16. In the Gospels, Jesus says that God seeks those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth, adding that God is a spirit and that true worship is done in spirit and in truth, John 4.23 and 24. Now, as we think about what Scripture requires of us, we may have several objections. What about it? the occasion when our hearts are distracted in worship and our attentions are divided, what do we do then? Or what do we do when our thoughts wander and we lose focus on the words we sing? Is God less glorified if our hearts are not fully engaged in worship? Or when a person isn't familiar with the songs and can't sing them with conviction, should he sing along or should he remain silent? Does God condemn us if we're unprepared for worship? What if, what if I don't feel much in my heart while I'm singing and worshiping the Lord? Am I guilty? In the second half of this video, I'll talk about the idea of preparing for worship and that we ought to prepare for worship and what that might look like and some practical concerns. Consider that worship is the centerpiece of the week. It should not be taken lightly. So here are a few suggestions for that, making worship the centerpiece of the week. Make sure to get adequate rest the night before so that you're prepared for worship. Arrive at church early enough so that you can find a parking spot and then you can find a place to sit in worship. Also, enter God's presence prayerfully, not presumptuously, asking His blessing upon our worship and upon the Sabbath day. Here are a few additional specific pointers. If you know it, review the order of worship beforehand looking for particular th things in the service that will vary from week to week. For example, is there a baptism? Be prepared to take the vow of assisting parents in raising their child in the fear of the Lord. If you know the sermon passage, read it ahead of time. Practice the psalms and hymns coming up in the liturgy. If a song has a refrain, teach it to your young children so they may participate in the singing at least a little bit. Above all this, make sure you go to church. We ought to gather and worship regardless of our preparation beforehand. We are God's covenant people, 
And because our primary loyalty is to Him, we ought to gather to meet with Him and other covenanting believers. When we are traveling, we ought to seek out a church wherein we may gather with other Christians to worship Christ. In the next video, I will offer a few encouragements as you run the course of Sunday worship.